Hello, Ray Phoenix. You're welcome to Let's Play Twisted Metal Black Part 4 as Yellow Jacket. So it's time we finally go take on the final boss, the cops. That's right, we're going against the cops in their police helicopter called Warhawk. Yeah, because they really just couldn't put enough Warhawk references into Twisted Metal. Warhawk was a game on the PS1 that came out around the same time as the original Twisted Metal. It's actually an offshoot of the original Twisted Metal. They originally intended there to be a part where you get into a plane, you can fly around, shoot at other contestants. But they decided to take that out of the game completely and just make that its own separate game called Warhawk. There's a lot of references to Warhawk and Twisted Metal. The main, vil the, the main villain of Warhawk is supposedly referenced in this game as he's the boss of for, for, for Dollface Darkseid in this game. And then there's Wartog. He's supposed to be a rough pun on Warhawk, Wartog. And, and so the weapons they used in the original Twisted Metal are the exact same weapons used in Warhawk. So Twisted Metal loves, seems to love referencing Warhawk. And now we're fighting against Warhawk, the wolf we'll technically fighting against the police, because he is a police copter saying, oh, you're in violation of, of city code something. Yeah, F the police, screw the police, fudge the police. We know that, that, that this game was clearly made by people who don't like the police, which is why they're always depicted as being, you know, people that fail to do their job or never get anything done right. That's probably why Outlaw the Cannon, winner of the original Twisted Metal, got screwed over, because he's a cop, and clearly the people that made this game don't seem to like cops that much. <laughs> This is pretty much for everyone that's ever hated police. Well, this is your time to, you know, finally fight against them, take a stand against them. It's exactly what we're doing in this game. They destroyed, and first Warhawk has a shield, just like Minion. You have the shield you have to destroy first where you can actually fight Warhawk. You have to destroy these tanker trucks and they explode near the shield and it'll damage his shield. When a shield gets damaged, then you can go all out and keep fight, firing every weapon you have and then eventually you'll get destroyed. So this is like one of the first time, I think this might be the only time actually that I know of. Or one of the only times you know of in Twisted Metal where a boss is actually something that flies above the ground. You can't play as the final boss either because he's not a ground car. He's a plane. Well, he's a helicopter. A flying battle helicopter. It's probably used in a war, maybe. Possibly the Vietnam War. Maybe a reference to the... Because there is a lot of Vietnam War stuff in this game. Mostly with Mr. Grimm's storyline. He's a, as he fought in Vietnam and all the hardships he went through and all the hardships he went through in Vietnam. But the good thing is, our special weapon, the, those spikes we used to ram into people usually, actually does have homing capabilities, which is perfect for this boss. Let's use homing missiles, and those and men are special, and fire missiles, and look at that. We are, it's actually not that strong once his shield is down. And use the homing weapons, you can actually take down Warhawk easy. Yeah, take that, police. Screw the police. Even this kid is like saying, oh, my father tells me I should always respect the police, but this time the police want my father gone. Yeah, the police deserve it for a lot of the stuff they do to people. I, I don't feel bad at all when cops die in real life. I sometimes think it's justified when police get killed on, on things. I'm just concerned from the stuff they do to people. Not that I have anything against the police. And sometimes they could be good people, but and sometimes they could be bad, just like regular citizens in real life. I mean, police never took anything. I said seriously once. One time I reported a child pornography case on Facebook to the police. Once a time I got accused of having child pornography and I almost got thrown out of school for it. I reported it to the police and they did jack all about it. They don't take child pornography serious. To them, child pornography is a big joke. So I'm going to destroy their police helicopter because of that. Yeah. Say pornogra child pornography is a joke one more time. And this is what's going to happen. <laughs> won the contest. I went to Calypso and asked for my prize. He promised that he'd make everything all better. It was a trick. He destroyed my controller. It killed my dad. I begged my dad to come back. I even tried to put the controller back together. But Calypso wouldn't let me. He said things in time would be all better. He said he needed someone to train to take over his contest when he died. He said my brother would have been the perfect choice, but since I killed him, I was the next best thing. He said it was in my blood. Odd to twist him out all four there, implying that Sweet Tooth is going to take over the tournament after Calypso, which is kind of a Calypso wanted in this game, just like in Twisted Metal. Well, Calypso didn't want it in Twisted Metal 4, but I guess that is what happened in Twisted Metal 4. Sweet Tooth did take over the tournament. It's implied that he wanted Sweet Tooth to take over the tournament in this game, but he couldn't because Sweet Tooth is dead. Yellow Jacket killed him. So now he wants 
Sweet Tooth's little brother to take over Twisted Metal eventually, and he didn't get his father back. What kind of ending is that? I mean, the reason why I play as Yellow Jack is I believe he deserves to win more than I ever contested in this game. All the contestants in this game have messed up storylines and messed in the head backstories because they're mostly messed in the head people, but Yellow Jack is actually one of the more normal contestants in the game, probably the most normal there is. Sure, he might be autistic, but he's still way more normal than a lot of these other freaks in this game that think they have a chance at winning. And then, and then there's the montage during the end credits where it shows the different scenes, the cutscenes. They really, they really went, went, went really well, like above and beyond these cutscenes of making them so detailed, so realistic. It's like the 2001, remember? This is like really like top of the top stuff for that time. This really blows away those those comic book like cutscenes they had in the in, in, in Twisted Metal 2, and they looked like comic books. And still, people still like that art style. I mean, it was really good, but this definitely is better than the text only endings they had in the original Twisted Metal. And people didn't like in Twisted Metal 3 and pre and poor, and they made the characters look like frickin' action figures. But the animation in this game is really good overall. This, this is some of the best I've seen in a video game. Even by today's standards, this animation is still really good, still really realistic. I can't imagine graphics looking any better than this. I mean, sure, they probably did make them look more realistic to a point where it's so realistic, it's like, what's the point of even using animation at all? Might as well use live action cutscenes, which you said they were originally going to do for the original Twisted Metal. Which is actually a common thing for a lot of games in the mid 90s to use live action cutscenes. Disruptor had live action cutscenes. So did uh, Warhawk. I think Warhawk had cutscenes, uh, live action cutscenes in Star Wars, Rebel Assault 2, The Hidden Empire. Those had live action cutscenes. And, and this game almost could have been live action, but now they kept it animated. Must have been really powerful. I wonder what kind of computers it used to make this. Really, I mean, my computer is really powerful, and it would take and it would take most of its computing power to produce something like this. It probably used something like really powerful. This is like over 20 years ago, and they had to have used something like really advanced. I mean, most people don't buy desktop computers much anymore because desktop because desktop computers are big. It's hard to carry them around. The only people that do buy them are people like to do stuff like this, graphics work, or serious gaming. But serious gaming is kind of related to graphics work. These, this, these ending credits are pretty good. These are possibly this is possibly the best ending credits in any of the Twisted Metal games. It doesn't just simply show the logo of the game with the credits rolling. The thing that worked on, no, they actually show you stuff from the game, and they and they, and they make them, and they, and they actually add good music to make it really like you know like like this, the cutscenes really stand out. So it actually could work well for a good trailer for the game, maybe, or if you wanted someone wanted to see what the game was like or the cutscenes are like, this is actually something pretty good to show them. Actually, a lot of people worked on this game, and they all get the good credits. All this, you'll wonder what these people are doing these days. You know, over 20 years ago, they worked on a twisted metal game. Wonder what the kinds of things they do now. <laughs> Yeah, so this game, I can see why people consider this game to be a masterpiece. It is like, it is very much like a, like Silence of the Lambs or, or some, or some film like that. It's trying to be a route and on that. I can see why people really like this game. I mean, it is really good. I mean, I kind of, I like this game. I'm not saying it's bad at all. I just like the classic ones more because they because they're not as edgy as this. And I don't really like violent or edgy stuff that much. Mostly because, mostly because of the stuff they teach kids in school these days, that violence and edgy stuff is what is the way to go. But we know the school system is wrong, we know that they're, but that they're not always right about stuff. And so that's kind of why, like, the earlier ones were to defy those people It says that everything these days has to be edgy. This is Ray Phoenix, signing out.